What's up, everybody? This is Bill Pesco Salito. I'm here with my lovely and talented and beautiful wife, Michelle Pesco Salito. And this is another episode of Real Talk with Bill and Michelle. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm doing well, and I am here with my awesome and talented and handsome husband, Bill Pesco Salito. How are you doing, Bill? <laughs> I'm great. And if you guys want to go check out our blog after this, our blog and website is onlinewealthpartner.com. But uh, before we dive into today's training, which we're very excited about, Michelle and I want you to hop on in here and uh, give us a shout out where you're watching from, say hello. Uh, what is it like where you are? Is it rainy? Is it stormy? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it breezy or blustery? Is it maybe sprinkling or drizzling? Maybe it's balmy. Breezy or blustery. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we want to hear the adjectives. Please explain or say the all the adjectives. Um, uh, so, hey, hi, mom. Judy. What's up, mom? Mom in law. Yes. Um, we got Anthony on. Hey, and um, good to have you here. And Mary Alice, good to have you here too. Mary Alice, as always. And lots That's more my... people are coming on. So again, as you hop on to this call, again, we're very excited to have you here. Sunny and pleasant in the UK. Nice, Anthony, very cool. Sunny like and that. pleasant, that is nice. Uh, yeah, so just uh, give a shout out, say hello, drop a comment below in the comment section, and that we can uh, say hi back to you. We like to keep these light, uh, informative, entertaining, but casual, you know, it's Friday and it's a Facebook Live, so we like to have a good time. We like to engage you. We love to pull you out into the conversation if possible so we can interact and make sure that the information and the content here we're delivering is really what's meant for you to help you with your business and push you forward and get you to the next level, wherever that might be. We've got some more people coming on. Uh, Robert, Ryan, welcome. Robert, how you doing? And we got Heather. Hey, <clears throat> Heather, how are you doing? We got two people in the house from North Carolina. Very cool. Um, Terry, good, good to see you here. Um, I know Bill is like super fired up about today's training. I am. Oh, look at Fitzroy. Now he's in Syria. Dema still in Damascus. Wow, very cool. Fitzroy, that is awesome. Fitzroy yes. is like in a different part of the world, or so it ooh, seems ooh, every time. Ooh, hey, ooh. there's my man, Eric David Duncanson. What is <laughs> up? My main man. And oh, there's Jan. Hey, what's up, Jan and Amy? Jan, Good to have you here. Cool. Victoria, I think, is in the house as well. Happy Friday to you too, Jan. Yes. So cool. All right. So keep coming on. Keep you know shouting Say out. We'll give a shout out. Keep letting us know where you're watching from. And because I want to talk to you really quickly, what we're going to deliver today, Michelle and I have thought long and long and hard about this uh, Facebook Live today, and we have come to the conclusion that there are three main things that are important for you when building your business online. Um, they, it starts with building an audience and engaging with them. Uh, then it move then or sorry, building an audience. Then it moves into engaging them. And then finally, it moves into selling them. And we've broken it down into three different sections. And each section, um, as far as building the audience, engaging the audience, and then selling that audience, there is a key question yes. that you need to ask yourself yes. uh, for each one of those. And so we're going to go through that key question for each of those three sections. And I think that it's really going to strip away maybe the frustration or overwhelm or confusion that you might be having right now in your business. So um, before you jump in, I just want to say hi, Tom. Welcome to the call, to this Facebook Live. And um, while you're waiting for us to dive in, which we are about to after I ask this very, very, very important question. Uh oh, I doubt hey, it. Hey, Patricia, important. what's up? Happy to have you here and happy hi, Friday. Uh, and Robert, what is going on? Um, okay, this is a really important question. Did you know this is Labor Day weekend? Uh, yes. I want to know what you guys have planned for Labor Day. And this Ooh. is kind of a little bit of a selfish question because I want to see if you're doing something super, super cool. So then maybe um, we can do that same thing. Yeah, we need and ideas. It gives basically. you ideas. And like my mom's birthday is the second. That's Tomorrow. Sunday. Sunday. Tomorrow. Sunday. Sunday. Something like that. But yeah, um, so we want to know what you guys are doing um, for this big Labor Day weekend. And uh, maybe it'll give us some ideas on what we can do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
That's why. That's why Very I want to cool. know. See, that was an important question. That was important. But let's get into the training. Yes. So the first thing, so if there's three kind of elements to building your business online, it starts with building your audience. And so the question you have to ask before you can build an audience, before you really can do anything, you have to ask this question, write this question down. Mm -hmm. Who are you serving? All right. Very simple, straightforward question. Who are you serving? So um, what that obviously implies is you need to dial in what's called your customer avatar. And your customer avatar is basically your ideal customer. So the customer avatar is not a target market. It's not a uh, big demographic. You know, a customer avatar is not women aged 30 to 60, right? A, a customer avatar is a specific person that you, you, you create, basically you make up this person. And uh, this is the profile of your ideal customer, meaning who ideally would want your product? Who ideally would you want to work with? Like who ideally uh, is, is your offer, your product, your service, whatever it is, who ideally is it meant for? Meaning who could it really help the most? Uh, taking a step further, what, what are the pains and the struggles and the challenges that they have that you want to help them conquer with your offer? Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, you know, like you said, that question that you should be asking and everybody should write this down unless you've got one of those amazing memories like I know that I have. Um, <laughs> but And I don't have. Who are you serving? Okay, and, and that's so important when it comes to really defining your message. And, and I know we're going to get into that a little bit, but, you know, just in everything that you do when it comes to online marketing, you have to keep in mind the person that you're serving because if you don't know who you're serving, your messaging can be very confusing or it could be too broad and, and you're missing your audience, um, especially if they're looking for you to be very specific. And, and the only way you can be specific is by knowing who you're serving. So really you need to identify that early on when it comes to building your business online, who are you serving? And once you have identified that, I'm going to be the person that kind of gives you the examples of, of how to implement that. But the, the way that you start building that audience is by some of the basic things that you do online, like creating a Facebook fan page. I mean, that's where you're watching us right now. You know, we've created a Facebook fan page um, and, and we're, we're serving our audience here. You could create a blog post or not a blog post, a blog, blog. you know, a WordPress blog or something. You could serve your audience through that. And we're going to talk about engagement strategies in a moment here. YouTube, you know, we are really jumping into YouTube right now. And I can't wait later on to kind of share some of those strategies and trainings that are working for us at a later date. Um, but, you know, YouTube is huge again. And, and being able to serve your audience through videos is mm -hmm. a really great strategy. Um, some of you may, you know, be in, on Instagram. Still another great way to serve your audience and reach out to people and build that audience. Um, and it doesn't have to be. I know when we first started out, we just focused on Facebook. So if those, some of you are feeling like you have to target, you know, you have to be on Instagram, you have to be on Pinterest, you have to be on YouTube, you have to be on Facebook, you have to be a blogger. That is not true if you're just starting out. All you need to do is start with one platform. In fact, I don't mm -hmm. encourage you to start with several platforms because when you do that you're spreading yourself too thin until you can master one platform and build up a really good audience there sometimes that's enough sometimes that's all you need is that one platform um, but then there comes a time where you feel like you want to kind of branch out a little more and that's certainly definitely recommended but you want to make sure that you've mastered that first platform and have built an audience there first absolutely and and before we move on to the next main point uh, one thing I want you to really think about long and hard and really consider is when creating your customer avatar and when thinking about how you're going to serve them. I think what, what I see oftentimes with, with some of our coaching clients and, and people that um, we have within our, our inner circle membership, uh, the Power Players Club, um, oftentimes people think they have to come up with all these different demographic type things and, and characteristics about their customer avatar. Meaning, you know, they'll start off saying, oh, you know, um, he, he's a man, he's age 45, his name is Steve, you know, he has, he has three kids 
his kids' names are, you know, uh, Junior, Fred, and Estelle. Right. Um, you know, uh, in his, you know, he on the weekends he likes to go see movies, um, especially horror movies. Um, but only after once he's done mowing the lawn, uh, which he doesn't like to do, but he he does mow the lawn, and and you know his favorite color is blue, and 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 they kind of go on and on and on about these just sort of characteristics on the avatar, and the 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 problem there, the challenge is that sometimes you get so bogged down in these characteristics that don't really have anything to do with how you will then serve them, or how you might target them, or how your product will help them. Right. So let's say your product is a is a, a, an energy drink or your product is an information product. And you're sitting there talking about, you know, Steve has three kids and the names of the kids are, you know, Ezekiel, Fred and Estelle. Wow. Uh, Sorry. That, that kind of was building up there. I had to get it out. Um, like, d does your product have anything to do with with the kids names? Right. Or you say, oh, in the weekend, he's really into bowling and and knitting mittens. Right. OK, well, does your pro who, who cares? Right. Does your product and how you're going to help them have anything to do with the fact that he likes bowling? I mean, he likes sewing. Right. Like knitting mittens. Right. So at what you so what you really need to focus on instead of all these just like, you know, just uh, characteristics or whatever demographic things is what is uh, your avatar's intent? Right. Meaning there's a before where they're in pain and struggle. Mm -hmm. And then there's an after, right? The after and after, after is over here. Um, the after, what they wanna get to is the desired state, the after, right? Your offer, your product, your service, presumably, will help them achieve that after state, right? And so it's the intent that you need to focus on more, the customer avatar's intent. Meaning, does your customer avatar want to learn how to build a business online? And so that's the intent. Do they want to learn how to generate more leads? Uh, is it to lose weight or whatever, right? That's gonna be their intent getting to that after state. So focus more on things that are going to revolve around their intentions and how you can help them get to the after state where they've achieved their goals and they're in a place now of happiness and joy rather than the pain and the struggle and focus less on their, their uh, I guess, extracurricular interests like bowling and knitting mittens and, and things like that. So I hope that that little tip there helps. And before we move on to number two, which is engaging with this audience now. Uh, yes, I want to say uh, hello to Michael. Welcome. Michelle and wants Linda, to say hello to Michael and, and Alan Monica, Wheeler. And Alan. And hey, Courtney, what is going Courtney, on? Courtney, what's up? Very cool. And we've got Frode on here. Yes, Frode. Um, nice. Very cool. But if that makes sense, drop a one. Yes, type a number one. Uno. Uno for our Espanol viewers, if we have any. <laughs> I don't even know if we have any Espanol viewers. Um, uh, numero one, uh, type number one, numero one below, or just the one. Just type literally, just hit the one on your keyboard uh, or on your phone hey, or Kenneth. whatever. Happy to have you here. Yeah. And cool. Got there some ones, ones coming over. Heather, Anthony, Mary Alice. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. All right. So number two in our three things that we're talking about today uh, is engaging, right? Engaging your audience. And the question you then have to ask yourself in revolving, revolving around question engaging your two. audience. Question number two is what value do you deliver, <laughs> right? What value are you actually delivering now to the audience to get them to, to engage with them, to, get, to build up that know, like, and trust factor, to position yourself as an authority, position yourself as the go-to person in whatever your specific niche or, or topic is, All right? So let's get into some things on, on how to engage with that audience. And Michelle, why don't yeah, you and, share with us that? Well, I mean, some examples on, you know, I think you should, we should probably elaborate on what you were saying. You know, what do you deliver and how do you provide that value? Um, it was like we were just on a, a coaching call earlier um, before this Facebook Live with one of our clients. And, um, you know, one of the things she was doing, because she's just kind of starting out doing an excellent job, but one of the things that she's doing is like she's sharing articles. Um, she's in the skincare niche. And so she had found a great article um, from Oil of LA or something like that, seven signs of something. It was something along these seven different things. And she said, is this okay? I'm sharing these articles on my fan page. 
And absolutely that's fine, but we pushed her, and, and all of you should think about doing this, is if you wanna provide value, you learn the stuff first. You read the articles, you do your research, you attend lives like this, you mm -hmm. attend webinars, you be the person, you be the student, you start to soak in all of this knowledge, and then you process it and you put your own meaning to it and go out there and share it with your audience because you know your audience best. So even though you're learning something within an article or a webinar or some videos, not, you know, maybe the entire thing may not be relevant to your audience. So you're kind of that go to person is what we like to call it, you know, um, be aware. You know, be a, be a student too, as much as you are a leader. You know, I would say be more of a leader, but definitely stay in the game and stay a student because we're still students and you bring in, and as you're learning that knowledge and stuff and you practice it yourself in your own business, you come out and you deliver that to your audience. So that's what value is about. And the way to deliver that value would be through Facebook Lives just like this. Um, absolutely, Eric, put your spin on it. Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn from it? You know, what did what was your biggest takeaways and how do you think it would serve your audience better? Um, but do Facebook Lives. You could do webinars, invite people to webinars. You can write blog posts. If you love to do videos, do YouTube videos. I mean, for Bill and I, he loves to write blog posts. I don't like to write blog posts. I would much rather do videos. Um, so, so you have to pick what you're good at or, or what you at least have an interest in and you know you can improve your skill sets on, but find something that you're good at or you want to improve your skill sets on and, and use that as your medium for delivering that value. And we have so many platforms that we can deliver that value on, whether that's speaking, whether that's on your Facebook fan page, whether that's on Instagram or through blogging, through video. There's so many ways that you can go out and reach your audience and really start engaging them. Yeah, and I want you. I want to say something right now that I want you to write down. This okay. is very, very important. Uh, we're talking about value and oh, okay. and what value you provide and how you're delivering. Do I need a pen? It. You don't need a pen. I don't need. Everyone a pen. here watching needs to write this down. Write down for me. If you're not clear on the value you deliver, or if you're not clear on the reason that you that you exist, as far as from a marketing standpoint, the market won't respond to you. Yeah. And, and they'll pass you by, right? So let me say it again. If you're not clear in your own head on, on, on the value that you deliver and how you're going to deliver it, the market won't respond. They won't respond to you or your offer. got to figure that out. And they'll go find someone else, right? Because people, there's buyers out there everywhere. I mean, we're all buyers. We're all consumers. There's buyers everywhere. There's no lack of buyers or customers, right? The only thing that might lack is their awareness of you and, and the fact that, that you exist. That's huge. Right? That is huge. So write that down. So after you've now written that down, you and if you don't have this crystal clear in your head, if you can't spit out, with, if someone asks what value you deliver, deliver and how do you deliver it, if you can't spit that answer out right away, like boom, like just like clockwork, like boom, this is my value, this is how I deliver it, I want you to think you need to take some time, you need to step back and, and, and define what that is and answer that question Otherwise, you'll just be a mishmash of, of mediocrity out there that, that people just don't see or, or respond to at all. So if that made sense and if you can see yourself here uh, in the very near future or if you already have or if you can see yourself um, determining and defining what your value is to the market and how you're going to, to put that out in the marketplace, if you can see yourself doing that, type a two, a two in the comment section below and we'll uh, wait for some people. To yeah, talk and, and, and uh, Aaron, I wanted to say hello. Hey, Aaron, what's up? What's up? You, okay, so Aaron, Victoria, and Mark, y'all, they're like in different rooms, apparently. So I did just see y'all's comments come across. Y'all must be watching this from one of our Facebook groups or something. So I just want to recognize you guys and say, hello, happy to have you here. We are excited. And Aaron thinks you made a damn good point, Bill. Well, Aaron's He's a like smart your biggest guy. Fan. Aaron's a smart guy. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that he recognized how amazing of a point I just made. Yeah. So yeah. kudos to you, Aaron, for being yeah. on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and let me just add this one okay. thing real quick. It's not your customer's job to to figure out uh, why they should buy from you. It's your job to to let them know why they should, they should buy from you. Right. It's your job. You know, if, if the customer's like, hmm, I don't really know 
what Bill and Michelle do. That's if that, if that were the case, that's us doing a bad job of providing value and putting it out there. Right. Right. It's our job as marketers to to make it so simple and crystal clear for for the prospect or for the or the, for the potential customer that they don't have to even think about it. It's just so obvious uh, the value that you're putting out there and how you're going to do it. Does that make sense? Awesome. That does. Cool. Thank you. So uh, I try to be funny sometimes, but Bill's so serious. Michelle, this is not a time for jokes. He's and I like, laughter. I like cut little jokes, and he still he he like keeps going. He doesn't even doesn't even phase up. Mm -hmm. I have like I have like a pretend wall right here. <laughs> I'm just like, what's up? I'm focused. I'm so focused on you. Okay, so the number three thing yes. is selling. Yeah. Right. You've got to sell if you want to build a business. Unless you're, doing you're this for a hobby. right. Unless you're doing this for free, because you just have like all this time on your hands, and you've got a you know a chest full of gold in the closet. You don't really need to make any money. Fun. You know, if that's you, then this Facebook Live is not for you. And I think people are afraid to sell. Like they love the part of building the audience and engaging, but I think a lot of people are afraid to sell. I think it's a big obstacle. I mean, would you agree? I mean, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think that that's probably a big obstacle for a lot of people. And so, so that's a great to. question. So before I before I get into this next an point, um, if you, okay, no, this is cool because a lot of people, you get into the home-based business space, you get into network marketing, you get into affiliate, affiliate marketing. Oh, my shirt says, uh, it's Back to the Future. It's, you know, one of my favorite movies from growing up, Back to the Future. I got a Back to the Future t-shirt on. Yes, I'm kind of an 80s dork. And if you're an 80s dork like me, you know, be proud. Um, so first of all, most people that get into the home-based business space uh, or you know, network marketing or affiliate marketing or whatever, they don't have previous sales experience, mm -hmm. right? A lot don't, probably 80, 90% of the people don't already, don't come to the table already having lots and lots of professional sales experience. And so therefore, naturally- Hey, Tannis. Tannis, what's up? Therefore, naturally, there's this maybe fear of selling or, or at least an apprehension. Yeah. Like maybe because you don't know how to go about it or you think like, oh, I don't want to be that, you know, salesy salesperson or that used car salesperson. Or I don't want to pressure people into doing it. And you think that selling means like pressuring people into doing something. And that's not the case. But uh, just by show of hands, quick, a quick little um, just say me or or type five, the, let, the number five. Do you have any apprehension. apprehension about selling? Do you have any at least? Yeah. The slice, like you know, awkwardness or or oh, anything. I was sold on the dream that selling. I wouldn't have to sell. Like when I first got into network marketing back in 2010, I was sold on the dream that no selling was involved. Right, and 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 that's and that's okay. So yeah, uh, but seriously, just say me or type the number five if you just have any, or maybe because it's just from lack of experience or just lack of maybe confidence or just feeling like I don't want to be perceived as yeah. like a high pressure salesperson, right? So if you're feeling that at all. Awesome. Awesome. Type of five, and it's totally and the cool. Ladies, because the ladies are typing a five. Good. Yeah, lots of, yep, lots of fives. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And that's okay. I understand. So totally. So here is the question. Okay, and, and Mark says, No, I like selling. Yeah, that's awesome. Then there totally are natural cool born salespeople. Totally awesome. So here's the question. Yes, there you go. That are. goes with number three. And that's how are you going to transform strangers? into customers right all right how are you going to transform strangers into customers because if you want to build your business online and you want to build it successfully and profitably you ultimately you have to transform strangers into customers that's just a fact right, right? There's, that's there's no disputing that at all unless again you want to just you know wallow in your own crapulence and not ever make any money and just have like a business on paper that doesn't actually produce anything right i mean if you want to just like again just have this you know hobby then don't sell you know go back to knitting mittens or whatever that you do uh, but if you want to have a profitable business you ultimately will have to transform strangers into customers so how are we going to do that well, um, you've got some great examples I think you should definitely talk about, I but do. but I want to go back to that word that you keep saying, transform. Is mm -hmm. that what you said? Not yeah. transformers, but transform. And my mentor <laughs> was so funny. Was that one of your jokes? Transformers? Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, yes, translate yes. Autobots and Decepticons yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So um, we just recently lost a very dear friend of ours, um, yeah. Mark Hoverson, and he was my you know original mentor, great friend. Um, passed away last week, but um, that's one of the reasons why we weren't here last Friday. We were at his funeral. Well, that was the reason. The Mark reason, Martin. yeah, not the only. Um, so one of the things that and he impacted me so much throughout my life, my business. And one of the things that I remember him always saying that if you're going to sell someone online, you have to paint a very clear picture yeah. of what's behind the door. So if you're telling someone to go to your link or you're telling someone to watch this video or if you're telling someone to buy a specific product or you're telling someone to come join the webinar, come to the home meeting if you're doing home meetings. I'm trying to give examples of you trying to sell someone into that first step to coming to do something, to take that next step, to sell the click. Whatever it is, you have got to paint a picture on what their life would look like after they take that action. It's called, what does that transformation look like? What does it look like behind the door? So an example would be, as soon as you register for this webinar, you are going to learn X, Y, Z, which will help you with X, Y, Z. You know, X, Y, Z is your, your, your specifics. Um, you know, you buy this Social Media Branding Academy of product. This is going to help you. Well, you're going to learn how to, in the very first module, you're going to learn how to build a Facebook fan page and set it up the right way so you have a solid foundation to build your business on. Because without a solid foundation, if something, if your foundation were to crack or crumble, your entire business is going to fall, just like a house would. So it's so explaining to the person from the very first step, as soon as they buy or as soon as they take that next step, what will they get behind the door? Wise, wise words from Mark Hoverson. And that is mm -hmm. so true that a lot of people, I think, forget that part. You know, they push, push, push and talk about themselves. And, oh, my God, you got to you got to buy this because, you know, I lost all this weight on this or it gave me more energy or, it, you know, made my eyelashes super long or, you know, made my hair silky smooth or I was able to make um, $5,000 in 30 days. You know, we talk about ourselves. That's not going to sell that person. You've got to paint the transformation for that person. And, um, and and when you get into all of that, but some of the ways to actually do that, you know, through the selling is obviously by building up that no like trust factor, you know, and you can sell through webinars by providing value. You can sell through videos by providing value. You can sell through phone calls by, you know, providing value and getting to know the person on the other line and finding out their pains and what they struggle with. Those are ways that you can actually sell people is by actually opening up your ears and listening first to what the person is struggling with in the pain. Absolutely. That was, that was a great point there, Michelle. And Thank you. Um, uh, an additional way to, to look at this is what you're doing is you're creating what's called the ideal sales yes, conversation. All right. Yeah. So people are saying like Patricia says, people Excellent. want to buy the results, not the process. Right. Yes, they want the after. Right. No one wants to buy um, a uh, uh, treadmill. No one wants to buy a treadmill. They want the results. They want to look better. Mm -hmm. Right. No one says, oh, I really have like a lot of extra space in my spare room. Let me fill it up with a clunky machine that costs, you know, two thousand dollars. No, they say I want a six pack abs or I want to lose weight. So they're buying the after. No one buys so, the hammer. They want the hole. Right. Well, they, they have to buy the hammer. Yeah, but they want the hole. Right. Right. The hole is what they want. Right. So <laughs> we create the ideal sales conversation. And and here's the 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 challenge that I see or where I think people sometimes get a little, get their wires crossed is you go from, um, not literally, but figurative, figuratively, you go from like meeting a person for the first time to buy my $500 product. Yeah. Right. And there's, there's, there's no, there's yeah. no like ramping up. Money. There's no ascension. It's literally like, um, if a guy went to a bar, met a girl and within five minutes was like, let's go get a room upstairs or go to the hotel and, you know, don't put a $500 you know, offer in front of a stranger, make whoopee. Right. So no, that's just, it's, it's putting the cart before the horse. You're getting there too soon, which is why you have a, a, a process where it goes a lead magnet, right? The ethical bribe where you generate leads, 
which then leads into, well, so it starts, first of all, you've given value like we talked about. Maybe it's a blog post where you provided a lot of value and that's how you engage them. And within that blog post, that value, there's a call to action to get more, which is the lead magnet, right? Which is now gonna be even more information in the blog post. And that's free. Then within the lead magnet, there'll be offers then to the next step, which is like an entry point offer, a $7 or $21 uh, item, you know, offer. And then once they purchase, if they purchase that, then the next step will be maybe a $297 offer. And then if they purchase that, the next step will be something even more high ticket, you know, $500 or $1,000 or whatever. Right? So there's this natural ascension. You don't go. There's psychology from, behind that. There is, right. And so you don't go from being, hey, uh, you're a lead, you just opted in to let me sell you a $2,000 uh, package. Right, because you're just you're skipping steps along the way. Because because uh, let me just say real quick, because psychologically you're willing to probably give up seven dollars. It's the price of a cup mm -hmm. of coffee at Starbucks, mm -hmm. you know, to to take a chance on something that looks good, whether you know that person or not. Right. So great point. So the ideal sales conversation is inherently happening if they become a lead. Say they opted in to get the lead magnet, and let's say the lead magnet was you know. Uh, 20 ways to build your business online using Facebook. You know, I don't know. But but you know that if that person opted in to get that lead magnet, that Very they're looking to build their business online using Facebook. So it makes sense that yes. ideal sales conversation then becomes they've now consumed the lead magnet. They got it. And your, your follow-up or the next step is a $7 product that goes into even more detail on building your business online using Facebook. The ideal sales conversation goes like this. Since, since I know you want to build your business online using Facebook, then the next logical step is ideal. for you. The, yeah, the next logical step is for you to get this $7 thing, which is going to teach you even more about it. Right? So you yeah. see how that, that works. Like they, they've already, they've already said, they've already basically raised their hands, said, yes, I want to learn how to build my business online using Facebook. Right. And that's why they opted in, became a lead. They received that lead magnet. So you can then say, look, seeing that it obviously you want to build your, your business online using Facebook, the next logical step is for you to now get uh, my, you know, 50 ways to build your business on Facebook or whatever that next product is. Um, the next, uh, so then they get that. The ideal, the next ideal sales conversation is look, seeing that you're really, you know, hyper focused on, on the, the more the more finer details and, and more advanced uh, things on building uh, your business online using Facebook, then it's logical. The next logical step is for you to get our course, Social Media Branding Academy 2.0, which is like the end all be all of Facebook marketing courses. Just so that makes sense. Yeah. Like it's that logic. But what you wouldn't do is is have a blog post that's about um, uh, about you know how to build your business to, through video marketing, and then say. Hey, it's because you read my blog post, buy my Facebook marketing course for two ninety seven, right? It, right? You see how right. you're like you're skipping, you're you're blocking there, you're skipping steps, or you're you're jumping the gun, and and that's not the ideal sales conversation. It's a very uh, unideal. Is that a word? Non-ideal sales conversation. Um, it's basically so. This is where if you're thinking, okay, I'm apprehensive about sales, or I don't have experience with sales, or I don't want to be a pushy salesperson. If you're marketing yep. the right way. You're not being a pushy salesperson. You're 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 taking people to the next logical step because they've already told you, they signaled you that this is what they want. All right. Now, if that makes sense to you, if if what we just shared, if, the, if maybe a light bulb went off, uh, type a three in the comment section below and click on like the like button or the heart button. Give us some yeah, some, uh, some emoji love over there. Um, if and only if that made sense to you and you and maybe that that broke down some barriers or, or clicked off some light bulbs for you here. I have a confession while we're waiting. What's that? And if you guys can guess it. Your confession? Yeah, sort of. So uh, some reason Bill this. left the television on. And by the way, it's over there, like behind the computer. And I'm not going to say what we're watching. OK. But I'm so distracted. Don't say that. No, I'm talking to you guys. Well, just while you're talking, I'm looking. Oh, just while I'm talking, she's not paying attention to anything going on here. There's something major going on. It's like an awesome series. It's from back in the day. If you guys can guess 
what it is we're watching. We have a pair of like Grant Cardone socks back there that we don't want. We'll send you a pair. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what we're watching behind there. It's from the 90s early, television. early 90s. It was a very long series. That's right. all the hints I'm going to give you. But early to mid 90s. I am like, late 90s. it's on behind here and it's it's not in widescreen. It's in this screen. So a very, 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 very popular show. And if you can guess what it is, in fact, something's major is going on right here, right now. And I'm like, I dork. keep going, oh. You're such a dork. They kissed. Oh my I god! Can't believe. If you can guess it, I will send you a pair of Grant Cardone socks. Uh, Tannis to Dallas. Uh, unfortunately, that is not correct. Uh, uh, later than that, it, literally, I think the first season was in '91 or something. Come like on, that. guys, guess. It probably went into like the late '90s. Young kids. That's my hint. I'll give you. Not uh, high school. High school kids. High schooly college. High schooly kids. Collegey. No. Hey Brian, what's up? What's uh, up? Not Seinfeld, unfortunately. That Sims is not back. Not to me. It's a series of TV shows. Yeah, not animated, real live people. Yes, and yeah, come on, you guys can guess it. You guys want a pair of great Cardone socks? They're really cool. I swear, I'll send them to you. She swears she'll send them because I don't you. want them. Yeah, I'm not a. Yeah, oh, I can't say in. that. That's probably not nice. But they're right, cool socks. Anything. They're cool. So oh, close. Saved Saved by the the bell. You're getting close. Okay, so that was the closest by far. Come on. Um, yes! Oh, Aaron Hart, 90210. <laughs> yeah, what will Beverly Hills 90210, baby? <laughs> so right now, Brenda's in, in Paris and Dylan is cheating on her with Kelly, and I just saw it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like Grant Cardone. The, the wheels literally just <laughs> fell off the Apple card. This officially, this Facebook Live is officially. We got, we got more. We got, okay, like all these people, we got four pairs of socks. Officially spun out of control here and just, we're now wallowing in our own crapulence is what's going on with this Facebook Live. It was awesome, Facebook Live. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you like a yes. real example of something that, that we do from an ideal sales conversation standpoint. I'm trying to reel this thing back. I'm I'm like, mm. All right, so um, we have our Power Players Club uh, inner circle, right? Power Players Club membership. And if, by the way, if you're a member of the Power Players Club and you're watching right now, just type, I'm a power player in the comments section. I'm a power player. You wanna player. see who we got here that are, that are part of the Power Players Club. Um, but, and it's weekly trainings that we provide and um, it's, it's all about how to build your business online. So one week it's this, one week it's that. It's a different topic, a different subject every single week. And it's just really in-depth, you know, killer training that we provide, if I do say so myself. It is. But the Thank ideal sales know. conversation would go something like this. Um, you know, since I know you want help building your business online using Facebook, then obviously joining the Power Players Club is the next logical step. Right. So if someone say, for example, we have a Facebook uh, lead magnet, Anthony says he's a power player. Nice. So we have a, a lead magnet that's based upon, uh, you know, Facebook. Right. So we can we can basically that they're telling us that if they opt in to get that lead magnet, we know then that they've signaled to us. They've raised their hand saying, look, I'm struggling with this or I want to learn that. I want to build my business online using Facebook. We can then after that uh, follow up with them. Uh, through for us, it's through email follow up, and we can we can comfortably and logically and obviously state to them uh, in a manner of speaking, have that ideal sales conversation. Look, since you you opted in and got this Facebook lead magnet, it's obvious to us that you want to build your business online using Facebook. And while this lead magnet may have been great, if you really want to get even more information, the next uh, logical choice for you to make is to join the Power Players Club inner circle. Yes. Right. So do you see how that kind of works in action? Now, think to yourself and we got cool. We got uh, power, Jan. I'm a power player. Uh, nice. Mary Alice. She's a power player. Michael. Michael Wash is a power player. Uh, Eric, Dave, Eric, my man, Eric David Duncanson's uh, a power player. Uh, Jane is a power player. We got a lot of you. Know, Frode's a power player. We got a lot. Yeah. You know, wow. Look at all these. Anthony, Heather. Uh, Monica, cool. So glad. Thank you all for being part of the Power Players yes. Club, and you all rock. We're gonna get stickers. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but did you see how that that made sense? Now, think about uh, your product or service or your offer, right? How could you create that ideal sales conversation? How could you have, let's say, for example, a blog post that then leads into a lead magnet that then leads into you saying for your 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 next offer. 
um, saying, look, um, seeing that, you know, you, you've clearly said, seeing that you want to, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z, therefore the next logical step for you is to buy this or to join this, right? And it's a, a natural ascension. And when you can create that ideal sales conversation, you don't have to be a seasoned salesperson. You don't have to become remotely close to being a pushy salesperson. You're, you're basically giving them what the next logical step. Now, some people will take you up on that offer and some won't. And that's just the numbers game. You know, it is what it is. That's fine. But um, it, it kind of removes the friction and it removes, for those of you earlier that typed a five because you said, yes, um, I'm apprehensive about sales or, or not confident about sales. Do you see how now you don't have to be apprehensive, right? You're having, when you engage in that ideal sales conversation, it's basically a layup because they've already raised their hand and told you, I'm already, I'm already struggling with this, do this, and to help them do it even more, right? So if that made sense, as we're kind of wrapping this all up, trying to get the wheels back on after the Beverly Hills 90210 <laughs> mishap that just took place. Um, <laughs> if that made sense, if you can see yourself engaging, uh, whether it be on the phone or through email follow-up or whatever medium you want to engage with, if you can see yourself engaging in the ideal sales conversation and that kind of breaking down the apprehension and removing any friction, if you can see that working for you at some time here in the future, type a four, the number four in the comment section below, um, just because we want to know that, that this is making sense to you and that this is resonating with you. Absolutely. We'll just wait. Yeah, we're waiting for the fours to start rolling. Fours, in. fours. Scout came over here and visited us a second ago. He did. He did. All right, so, there comes cool. some, fours. some fours. Very cool. All right. Nice. So I'll leave you all with this now. Ooh. Seeing that you're on this Facebook Live and you wanted to learn the three foundational aspects to building your business online, uh, we hope you enjoyed this. But the next logical step to get even more information, get even more training on how you can build your business online is for you to join the Power Players Club. So that's the ideal sales conversation in action right there. And I'm not trying to make this a bait and switch. We didn't invite you on here today to just like pitch the Power Players Club. But obviously, it's our inner circle. We love it. We think it's tremendous And we value. just taught a four-week series or like four-module series on how to build a lead magnet. I mean, finding your offer, like we gave some shortcuts, creating your capture page, connecting your autoresponder to it, creating your list, giving you templates for follow-up emails, creating your thank you page, creating your Facebook ad. Yes, we just did that and you get that for free when you join the Power Players Club. So it's inside of there ready for you to go through. So join the Power Players Club. If you wanna join the Power Players Club, type below. Please send me the Power Players Club information and we will get that over to you. Yeah. And I want to see all of you little awesome faces that say more information or, you know. Why are they little? Why do you have little, little faces? Okay, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're beautiful faces. I want to see you guys inside of there for sure. Yeah. Um, so things are really breaking out on 90210 right now. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so if you're not yet in the, okay, we got some people saying Scout some info. Yeah, if you're not yet in the Power Players Club, uh, type below and you want the information. Look, we'll just send you the deets, you know, no commitment, obviously. Um, type, uh, yes, please send me the info and we'll get that over to you. And now we're gonna be, our, this party's getting crashed by our dog, Scout. Scoutman's coming to say hi. Hi, buddy. He's saying hi to everybody. He said, join the Power Fire Club. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So the wheels have officially fallen off this entire thing now between 90210 and Scout busting in. We got to end this. So I uh, hope you all have an awesome weekend. Thank you for coming out. We had a lot of fun. And we will see you next week, same bat time, same bat channel for another uh, episode of Real Talk with Bill and, and Michelle. Michelle. And we'll see you next time, everybody. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Weekend. Bye. Bye.